This video is brought to you by Cool Green Clothing. Cool Green Clothing is a Baltimore-based clothing line that started back in 2018 and has been growing strong ever since. Make sure you follow Cool Green Clothing on Facebook and IG at Cool Green Clothing and check out their website, coolgreenclothing.com, where you can find the latest Cool Green fashions and hats, women's apparel, and the latest men's collection. Remember, if you ain't coolin' and gettin' the green, you're in the water. Rain, shorty. Got you, son. Appreciate the outfit, boss, man. I put this shit together. You hear me? Drip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Shout out, man. Shout out to Cool Green, man. You feel me? Variety of stuff, man. You feel me? Good dude, for real. You know what I mean? His 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 design is impeccable, man. You, you know what I mean? It, it, it speak for itself. Cool green, green selling. Cool green is what's up. Baltimore people need to get on that. Cool green. Yeah, All right. right yeah. It's from my old head. Let yeah. you know. How old you is, man? Fifty-seven. And, and, you, and you know about the cool green, right? I know about the cool green. Man, this man, 57 years old. You know about What's going on, YouTube fam? This your boy, Tony, two times, and we back with another episode of the Baltimore Way, man. Before I start, be sure to like, comment, share the video, subscribe if you're new to the fam, and tap that bell. Tonight, we got a good story for y'all. Be sure to watch it to the end. Let's get right into it. Baltimore, Maryland has always and will always be home to me, no matter where I'm at in the world. I take my experiences I learned and use them to my advantage. The struggles of a city that's been traumatized by the narcotics trade for decades. But in order to understand the culture, you first have to understand what made it this way. Some people in Baltimore are born into situations or environments where the odds are set against them. Lack of income, addicts as parents, or just simply a neighborhood filled with smack, ready, and violence. It either shapes you to become a product of your environment or makes you want more out of life. On today's episode of The Baltimore Way, we will discuss a man named D. Watkins and his struggles to come from a street mindset to a real life success story. In interviews, D. Watkins spoke on growing up during the crack era in East Baltimore and how he seen it firsthand change the environment of the city and the way business was handled in the streets. Watkins reflects on watching his friends and their parents go from normal life to everybody being hooked or even selling crack, including himself, stating all the teenagers around his way were selling ready, but the drug wasn't leaving the neighborhood, saying everybody's parents was using and the kids where he was selling or getting high as well. Then the gun violence, which often came from disputes over who controlled the street corner, Watkins explained ducking shots himself and his brother even being killed during the time he was hustling. He reflected on losing friends to the streets, some dead or in prison, and becoming cold, not caring about living or dying. Speaking on the violence in the city back then, and his own relationships with Blickies. Saying in the crack era, people dying wasn't a strange thing, or seeing someone getting killed. Being on the basketball court and shots ringing out was normal. Watkins stated he even used to carry a burner too, but tried his best not to use it, maybe just flash it to get out of a crazy situation. Thinking back when it was just powder, coke, and smack, he said it was a couple of older dudes who controlled whole regions of the city, and you had to cop the weight from them. More of a laid back, organized situation. But once crack came in, everybody had a chance to be a boss or cane pant. Brand new crews on every corner, 15 or 16 year olds, making 10, $10,000 or more a week. But with that came jealousy. If a crew felt as though another crew was doing better than them, the guns came out. And it quickly went from who had the most hustle to who could take over the most corners and drop the most bodies. Watkins well, said him and his friends used to joke about if anybody they knew had parents that wasn't on drugs, at least one of their parents, or wasn't used to getting high or trying to get clean from getting high. But despite growing up in the heart of the drug trade in Baltimore City, D. Watkins decided he wanted more. After feeling alone, realizing all his friends were dead or in prison, he put down the drugs and went to college. 
now having three degrees, including a Master of Education from John Hopkins and a Master's of Fine Arts and Creative Writing from the University of Baltimore. He is now an established author with a book, The B-Side, Living and Dying While Black in America. D. Watkins decided not to get caught up in the cycle and make a way out of uh, no way. I salute him for that because it's not that easy to have that mindset in a city that's overlooked and honestly, if it wasn't for the drug game, would be in poverty. A lot of people see hustling as a way out. It's kind of like survival. Not thinking of what it does to the community, just knowing they gotta eat. More of this story, struggle builds character. We all go through things, and coming from Baltimore, we have all seen a lot of things. But remember, it's always a way out the trenches. Now that's the Baltimore way. Man, salute the D. Watkins, you feel me? This story was deep because I feel like bro made a way out of no way. You know what I mean? He was hustling. He said he from over east. He was in the trenches. He lost a brother to the game. And he said he grew up in a time when he remember when the streets weren't really like that. It was a lot better. It was a lot more organized. I mean, crime was still going on. People were still hustling, trying to make money. But people weren't just out here just knocking each other off for nothing. But then he said when it went from powder to ready, my father told me the same thing, like it got a little more different. It became a lot more cut though. Now you got people beefing over these blocks because the product was cheaper, more people was getting it, younger dudes were stepping in the game and it was crews popping up on every corner. Now what a lot of people don't understand, when you in an environment that's already impoverished, impoverished and people ain't got a lot and people just trying to make it day to day, when something like that come in, it's gonna take over because people see a way out, they see a way to make money. So you really can't knock it, but it's just like how it took over and what it did to families, what it did to parents, you feel me? What it did to loved ones, a lot of people lost their life. So man, it's dope to see bro went back, you know, to school, got his degrees, writing books, doing the right thing, helping the city, you feel me? I feel like that's a real success story, you know what I mean? I know we talk about a lot of other things on this channel to try to get the kids to understand like it's other ways or what's going to happen if you take certain ways but this right here this what happens when you can change your mindset no matter what environment you in and want more out of life and it's possible you feel me because bro went through the same thing a lot of people went through a lot of us probably went through but he made a decision to get right so i salute bro for that man but yeah this is another episode of the baltimore way you feel me this is the d walking story be sure to like comment share i appreciate the love and support like always i love y'all fam i'm out